My guest today is Gavin Bowman. Gavin, how are you doing today? Hey, David. I am quite all right. Uh, some would say fantastically well. Let's go I, with that. <laughs> I mean, you look fantastic. It's been so long since I've seen you, uh, and I'm reminded what a great smile you have. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm all I'm all grins these days. Um, <laughs> you know, things are starting to, to lighten up around here with the pandemic. You know, everybody's safe at home. So uh, thank you. It's been forever. It Since we've between, chatted. We, and we used to work together, and then uh, we, we kind of on the same, I don't know, the broader team, but yes. our paths don't cross enough. We've uh, definitely, like, we've paraboled in and out <laughs> <It's> <laughs> for, like, the last six or so years. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, now, you were telling me that you were working with a tool that, I, that I'm not familiar with at all, a tool called, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Sonar Cube. Is that how you say it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm glad that you don't know too much about it, because that means I don't have to know that much to impress you. Um, <laughs> impress them. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. The Internet. I hope the Internet doesn't know too much about it. Either. We have literally tens of people watching. <laughs> well, I'm, that's that's dozens more than uh, watch me on the daily. So that's fine. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, David. Yeah. I'm, so I'm relatively new to Sonar Cube as well. I've been working with it for the past few months. It is. Um, really a collection of, of tools that allow for uh, things like code quality, code security, and um, sort of um, uh, just repository analysis. Um, there are three different components. There's a Sonar Cube itself, which is a server that you send all of your uh, scans to. Um, and there's the actual thing that does the scanning, which is Sonar Scanner, um, which looks through your code base and looks for things that um, as developers, a lot of times our IDEs will give us, but a lot of times, depending on the tools you're using, uh, you may not get as well, right? Um, so it scans and sends it off to Sonar Cube. Uh, and finally, there's a the other component, the third tenant called Sonar Lint, which is something you do use in your editor or in your um, IDE to actively tell you, hey, this is you know you're going to hit a null pointer exception, or hey, you're going to um, you know, this is a code smell, this variable isn't used ever, or hey, this could be read only, that sort of thing. Um, it has been a lot of fun working with it, uh, especially with um, this new team. It's really great because as you know, David, in our line of work, we sort of find a customer, have our own team, and we sort of merge as a as a hybrid team. Um, or as I like to say, we, we're the symbiote and the other, the customer is the Spider-Man. Um, and so- You're Venom? <laughs> Um, yeah, Venom works. Venom works. I didn't want to get to Eddie Brock with it, you know, because Eddie's got some problems. But <laughs> but at least Peter Parker's trying to do well. For the black co alien costume from Secret Wars. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, by the way, David, we're going to have a, a second episode after this. We're going to just talk <laughs> Marvel. Um, but yeah, it's really good because, you know, um, we have our own tool set that we're used to, obviously, and the client also has their own tool set that they're used to. But this is a really good sort of democratizing a tool that says, hey, your code isn't going to get here unless it adheres to, you know, um, these me measures of quality, um, which is uh, really, really exciting. So hmm. I've been using it for a few months. Um, I'm in love with it. Um, but it is not, it's not perfect. It is sort of, you know, it tries to take a hammer to everything. Okay. Um, uh, but what I do like about it is it supports uh, so many languages. I think over 25 languages. Right now we're using it for .NET. Um, and I believe we're using it for JavaScript, but don't call me on that. But uh, it is just really sort of ubiquitous now. Um, you can have a hosted version where Sonar Cube, the folks that be sort of manage that and you pay um, um, a monthly fee for, or you can pull down your own version of Sonar Cube, pay, pay the license to use that and spin it up in your own maybe Azure instance or AWS instance, which is great. Okay, so it's it's cloud-based and it's a service, yes. uh, software as a service. Um, tell me about setting it up. How do you can, how does it, how does it know what code you're writing? Yeah, yeah, so great question. So on the local side, you would pretty much just install the Sonar Lint tool, like any other extension in whatever IDE you're using. Right. I've been using it in Visual Studio, uh, VS proper, not VS code, though it does support VS code. Mm -hmm. I've done some Python stuff there as well. 
um, you would pull it down, and in the way that it, uh, in the way that Roslyn works, right? Those so static analysis tools um, for C sharp, it also functions by you know just pre-compiling your code as you write it, and just looking for code smells and looking for security vulnerabilities. Um, and what I like about it is it'll point out an error. Um, or you know something that will compile right but it'll be a code smell or a security vulnerability and it'll show you this really cool link um that tells you in plain english why this is a vulnerability and right. when it even became a thing right so um for instance there's like you know kicking up uh, an HTTP client as a singleton, and what are the risks associated with that in .net and you like you can click this little link and it'll bring you to a blog post just detailing hey you can run out of sockets if you do this for long enough. Maybe you don't do this. Um, so I, I love the linting component. Um, and that is free. Anyone can just pull that down. Um, now, Sonar Cube, like you mentioned, is hosted. So you would spin that up. Um, you can have it running in a virtual machine in Azure, spin it up, open a port, you know, um, and you have your own dashboard you can go to. And you can actually run the linter in a connected mode with the server. And, uh, and what does the linter do? Uh, so the linter is the bit that tells you, hey, um, locally, tells the dev writing code locally that, hey, something's awry. Hey, this is a code smell. It gives you those squigglies while you're coding. Yeah, yeah, you've used the word code smell a few times here. Can you define that, please? Yeah. I think a lot of people oh, don't phrase it. Yeah, yeah. So a code smell, that's a really good question. What is a code smell? They can be so versatile. Um, so a code smell is something that will run, will compile, but it isn't inherently good to have for a couple of reasons. Maybe you're declaring a variable that never gets used, right? That's wasteful. Um, you know, maybe you have a uh, a try and a catch without a generic exception being caught. Maybe you're only looking for one exception. And so things can slip out, right? Um, and things can break down the line. So um, sort of good practices that you want to follow. Code smells are the antithesis of that. Got it. That's a good definition. It's a, a potentially bad problem. Yeah, yeah, potentially bad problem. All right, um, all right, thanks. I'm sorry I interrupted, but go ahead, please. No, no, I love it. I love it. So yeah, the linter is the local component of that, and the Sonar Cube server is well the server component of that. And uh, Sonar Cube has this concept of these measures called quality gates. So you, you as you know, David, the tech lead, um, David, you're now a tech lead, by the way. You get thanks twice as much work and no rates. Uh, <laughs> um, but you, as David the tech lead, can say, hey, I'm OK with you know, X number of code smells being introduced as part of any commit. Anything more than this in a code base, I won't allow. You can mm -hmm. say, I don't want to have any more than zero. You can say, you know, what whatever you want effectively. And the power in that is that when you're running Sonar Lint, you can run it in a connected mode that talks to the Sonar Cube server. So you can know. Um, what your specific rules and quality gates are at any given point, um, which is really cool in my opinion. <laughs> um, so the way you would set up the server, like I mentioned, it's a virtual machine um, you can run. You can also run a you know your own hosted instance, sort of like a pass application if that's what you wanted to do. Um, but if um, you wanted to say have some rules set up around working with multiple members of a team, right? You really want to look to uh, continuous integration as the means of like actively analyzing your code base and making sure that, you know, things are, are healthy over a long period of time. Um, so the dashboard will show you things like, hey, these are bugs we've seen. This is your unit test coverage. These are how many unit tests you have. Um, this is a, a measured graph over the last, you know, set period of, you know, uh, bugs introduced or code smells introduced, overall repository health, which I love to death because uh, I don't care what anyone says, every developer loves a good graph. Um, <laughs> there's nothing better than that. <laughs> good graph with lots of green on it, absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, uh, tell me about uh, configuration. How do you, how do you, does it come with a set of rules or do you add to those rules? Can I, can I remove rules from it? How does that work? Solid question. So the short answer is yes. It comes with pre-baked with a set of rules, and it is very, very rigid uh, in the beginning. Um, and that can be a blessing and a curse. Uh, we'll get to the curse part in a minute. But um, the good thing about that is for every language, um, Sonar Cube has pretty much follows the uh, you know the lay of the land of that language's uh, organizing body, right? So 
Um, for instance, in C-sharp land, if you're writing C-sharp in .NET, it'll link you to the specific Microsoft Docs error that it's mm. surfacing right now, right? Um, and the same for Python, right? Like it'll show you the peps that you might be violating. Um, PEP, by the way, for people who may not know, are Python enhancement proposals. <laughs> Look it up. I think that's it. Python enhancement proposals. In order to see a change in the language, you have to submit a PEP. Um, so Sonar Cube adheres to those, and it'll link you to those as well. So it does come with built-in pre-configured quality gates. But David, what if you're working with this really old school code base, right? You've been, you know, um, flexing your COBOL muscles. I have no idea if COBOL is supported by Sonar Cube, but it's been around since the 80s, and there are a lot of mistakes. But you want to make sure any new code I introduce into Sonar Cube is, you know, free and clear of these types of errors that we've made in the past, right? Um, so that's where you could get into modifying your own quality gates to being, you know, okay with some of this old stuff, but not okay with any of the new stuff, right? Um, and so you can have a you you are graded by the way there are you know everything from a to f you can get grades um and uh, you can see the overall health of your repository and the overall health of new commits which i love um sure yeah i was just got off a project where we had um, uh, i think we were using um whatever fx cop is called these days the the microsoft uh, style cop uh, uh yeah, yeah. Anyway, we were um uh, and they had they had rules on things like oh the naming of variables the conventions for private variables the the number of blank lines between uh, your code I mean style things to that level and it wouldn't yes. deploy it would right? not deploy it would not pass a, a yeah. build a continuation of your build unless, unless I adhere to every single one of these rules yes yes and Sonarchy works uh, much in the same way um, with the added benefit of having a server component that. Um, allows you to set your own rules and you can expose a, a really cool report to maybe key stakeholders for the project or, um, you know, uh, the dev lead of the project so we can track over time how we're doing. I just looked on python.org. You were correct. Python enhancement yes. proposals. Tell yes. me I'm not bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, so you're actually using this in production in your uh, current project? We are, yes, we are. And it has been very helpful, um, particularly because we are working with um, developers who aren't necessarily seeing C Sharp for the 50 millionth time, right? We um, we do have on our client team, right? We've got some folks that are used to .NET and C Sharp, but some folks who are coming from, even on our team, like coming from maybe more of a Java background, right? So camel casing versus Pascal casing and things like right. that. Um, so Sonar Cube has been a really good gatekeeper for things like that. So when we think everything looks good, we kick up a pull request. We've got this um, automated CI pipeline that runs, built by yours truly, um, that will you know run a build, a scan, a unit test, um, and a sonar scan. And that's that that sort of middle agent, right? The sonar scan is the thing that um, looks at your entire code base, captures the result, looks at all your unit tests and your test coverage report captures all that and sends it off to sonar cube for um you know analysis down the line uh, and if sonar scan fails um we will not we will fail that pipeline and you will not deploy and you won't get a merge sounds like you're using the azure devops for your pipelines is that true i am yes tell me about the integration of that how does that work um, so the great thing about Sonar Scanner is that it is a um, it's offered as a CLI tool. So if you're like me, which is a dirty, filthy Bash script boy, um, uh, you can run it always till Sunday and an Azure Pipelines Bash task. Okay. Yeah, it's great, and you just feed it the flags that you want. Um, uh, you can do things like say, hey, I want to I want to scan the .NET code base. I don't want to scan the JavaScript stuff, so I can say flag passing a flag that just says ignore JavaScript files, things like that, as well as other directories and stuff like and that. And it just returns a pass or a fail that you could plug into your pipeline to yes. not to deploy? Um, which again is a flag that you have to feed it. So if you, by default, if you don't give it anything, it'll it'll pass and it'll it'll submit the scan, but you'll just see the health of your repository decline if it's a bad if it's a bad run. But um, you can say, hey, wait on this quality gate, set that to true. Um, and if that happens, it'll throw like an error to to standard out um, and that'll fail the pipeline. 
Um, I see here that it's open source. Does that mean that they're taking contributions for it or what to what level is it open source? Um, so great question. So it is open source and it isn't. Um, <laughs> Sonar Cube Server is definitely open source, um, and that anybody can go in and and um, add to the uh, the core code base um, and things of that nature. And you can go and run your own. However, certain features are locked behind a paywall. So the Community Edition, totally free and open source, that allows for, like we mentioned, CI/CD integration, the ability to look at bugs, vulnerabilities, and it supports only a subset of its total languages out of the gate. Um, but if you go up to the developer edition, you get a lot more for it. Um, things like uh, instead of just uh, master branch or main branch, rather, uh, branch analysis, you get multiple branch analysis. So you can see how well is develop doing compared to main. How well is, um, you can also get pull request um, analysis, which is before this code is actually merged in, you know, how does this pull request look? compared to the target that I'm trying to merge to. So um, if anyone is doing this with a team, um, I recommend that you probably want to start looking at developer edition. Well, maybe start with community, see if you like it, and right. then upgrade to developer edition down the line. Is that what your team is using? Uh, as of now, we're actually using community edition. Um, <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's why it exists. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm the same way. Use the free one until you hit that wall, and then exactly. just, justify uh, paying the fee for it. But there are some some trade offs for sure. Um, we're noticing, um, for instance, if we if we run a pipeline, a CI pipeline, like maybe I kick up a pull request and it and I fail, um, there is a URL you can go to. You can just click that link and it'll take you to the Sonar Cube dashboard, and you can see why you failed. Problem with the community edition though is if someone else runs their pipeline right after me, I'll know that my pipeline failed, but if they've already run it and the sonar scan has happened, the only result I see is the most recent scan. So um, yeah, it's less than ideal when you're working with uh, larger teams. And I just also checked the COBOL is in fact among the 20. <laughs> so, so. For those, uh, those of you out there <laughs> writing code ball. <laughs> Student developers, so. it's time. It's coming back. We're really into <laughs> suspenders and hipster wear. Cobol is the most hipster <laughs> I've language. I've never written any Cobol, even back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we have that we should have? Um, let me think. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. SonarCube is great. I really think that maybe SonarCube isn't the tool, but I do want to get out there since, since you know, I'm on the internet now and I've got to, I've got a platform. Um, when you're working with larger teams, uh, you want to make sure that there is some barrier between you, the programmer, and the code base to measure things like um, quality code validation. Uh, I think that is super valuable, and that's sort of um, the takeaway, the take home I want to give your adoring fans out here, David. But um, there should be something. It doesn't have to be Sonar Cube. It could just be a style cop running. You know, it could be um, a GitHub super linter running or something like that. Um, if you don't want the connected aspect of Sonar Cube, good advice. I totally agree. Uh, are you still doing any public speaking or writing or anything like that? Oh, um, not so much anymore, but I would love to get back in the circuit. I honestly have not realized how much I missed. I always do this. I go through these these waves, David. Um, I realize how much I miss being on stage as soon as I find myself on stage again. So when I'm presenting sort of like maybe a white paper we're working on to um, stakeholders or when I'm talking to you and I know this is gonna get out to the public, I realize, man, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I should keep doing this. So you might see me again real soon. Oh, you know, there's a code camp in Atlanta in July. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm gonna send you to the call for speakers. It closes Ooh. in a few days. Well, if anyone's interested in seeing a CI CD pipeline with Sonar Cube running, that might be uh, that might be something I submit. See if we can make that happen. I bet as well people are said. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Gavin. I appreciate it, and you stay safe. Oh, David, thank you, man. It's been great as always, and you as well. And I just want to say, Kentucky bourbon goes best with technology and friends. <laughs>